We're going to start off right away with Liz Rappaport, our Goldman reporter. Good morning, Liz. Good morning. Well, you got you got the page one story today at the top of the journal talking about Goldman is establishing a private bank. And first off, I want to set the stage for people a little bit here. We're not talking about retail branches and ATMs no. here. T tell us a little bit about what Goldman's doing. Goldman is trying to sort of capitalize on the business that it has in private wealth management, which is basically advising its many of its sort of wealthy families, wealthy customers, you know, individuals on where to invest their money. So they already have that huge client base and they want to kind of build that into a bank. So they're they're collecting deposits from them, they're going to they're giving out mortgages now. They're those are the things that they hadn't done before. So they they're sort of rounding out that business and making it more like a bank and deposits are good for Goldman. Yeah, we've got a, on screen for people here the cut the deposits they have uh, today. And I guess did they really start taking deposits really in 2008 when they became a bank holding company? Is that when uh, they first started collecting deposits? Yes, or? I mean deposits. Yes, to some degree. This they 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 have deposits of other types of things that they you know uh, money from other types of customers and they do sweep account type stuff and they you know they've done some activities in their mm -hmm. bank before but this is sort of more of like a you know strategic decision to and they're, sort of they're build effectively up this kind of gonna, bank i guess double the if they have 50 billion of deposits or if they had 50 billion of deposits they're they're targeting 100 billion now they're targeting 100 billion um, i think that that's you know at least for starters you know uh, and 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 the way i understood it is they're targeting 100 billion in loans and that's above and beyond kind of the stuff that they store they stashed at the bank when they became a bank holding company mm -hmm. which was a lot of derivatives and and other types of securities that benefit from being at that very highly rated you know bank unit is is the is the reason behind this move really the need to plug the revenue and profit hole that, that Goldman has now that trading and investment banking just hasn't been as lucrative is, is that the primary mover here I mean we have a chart as you're answering we have a chart for folks that shows revenue declining uh, profits declining over the last few years. Well, hopefully we'll get that up on screen in a second. But tell us a little bit about what is that really what's driving this? Yes, I, you know, any effort that they can make to, you know, add incrementally to their profits and revenues is, is something that they're starting to really look at. You know, they were in crisis mode, then they were in post-crisis mode. And I feel like, you know, or what I understand is that they've sort of turned the ship to sort of look look to the future and try to try to get revenues where they can. I think that they would argue that or would say that the um, trading and investment banking will pick back up when the economy and the regulatory picture and political global picture gets gets clearer. So even, they're not trying trading, to plug the hole, in, they're just trying to add e right Even now. trading could pick up again because is the Volcker rule really going to and some of the other regulations from Dodd Frank is that really going to put the hammer lock on the potential profits you can generate from trading for some of these? Yeah, I think things? it will. It will. It hampers it for sure. But I think that client, they, you know, client activity. If there's more trading going on, they're going to be able to make more money. I think that they, you know, the Volcker rule is is limiting, but it's not totally. Uh, I mean, it's not a. It's not a. It's not the most damaging thing that pe as people as people. Expect. I do also want to ask you the, the other interesting thing here, of course, is deposit funding. That can yes. be more stable than some of the other kinds of funding that you put on a balance sheet. Um, of course, uh, thinking back to 2008, and even Goldman, I mean, seen sure. as one of the more impregnable banks, I, one of the things I remember, of course, was the FDIC had a lending program that mm -hmm. basically guaranteed debt, and Goldman was the first one, to, I believe, one of the first ones borrowed, and they borrowed 20 to $30 billion from that, you know, yes. with the full faith and credit of the United States government. That was how they were funding, you know, a big portion of their debt. Yeah. Um, but deposits are seen as a more more stable source of funding, so this will help strengthen the bank. Yeah, deposits are definitely seen as a more stable source of funding. Separate, you know, apart from that, they fund themselves primarily through overnight lending type of op activities, which you know is th those those things. That type of funding is more subject to sort of the whims of the market, and when people get really afraid, you know, it's harder and more expensive for them to fund themselves in that way. So deposits, you know, they come, they stay, you know, they're always there, and they're they're very highly regulated. Mm -hmm. There's not that much they can do with with deposits. So I wonder if there will be more pressure on regulators now that you have depo more deposits in these banks to make sure that they they really kind of keep these trading operations, you know. In less risky, in less risky areas, so they don't become. You know, you see what what happened, of course, to J.P. Morgan.